Good evening. The boyfriend of the 18-year-old mother of a four-month-old baby is one of two persons named as persons of interest in her shooting death last night. The man has been identified as Eric Murdoch, otherwise called Brando, who is also the father of the victim's child. His uncle, Tevin Cross, is also being sought by the police. Devonise Nelson, otherwise known as Pinky, a student from North Street, Kingston, was fatally shot at her child's father's home in Denham Town last night. It has also been reported that her baby had been admitted to hospital prior to her death. Police said Murdoch and his uncle, both from Kings Heights, Water Street, Kingston 14, are being asked to turn themselves in to the Denham Town Police immediately. The police said residents reported hearing explosions and summoned members of the security forces. Now, upon the arrival of the police, a joint search of the area was conducted with the assistance of the military. During the search, they were alerted to the apartment in Kings Heights. Upon the arrival of the joint team, they reportedly saw the door to the apartment ajar and entered the premises. Now, upon entering, the team saw Nelson's body laying on the side in a pool of blood. The body had what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the left side of the face. Nelson was taken to the Kingston Public Hospital, KPH, where she was confirmed dead. A close friend of the family says this incident has come as a surprise to the community and everyone's hurting for the young mother. I was crushed, heartbroken, my shock. For no sir, she just have one baby one day. We're pregnant at the same time, me and our sister are close. But just can't come to the realization that this really am to she. Such a young girl with this tragic death. I can't believe this man. And how she died and who killed her? That's really messed up. Like how the father of the child expect the child to grow up knowing that the father killed the mother. The story didn't right. That not so right. And my friend, sister, my good friend, sister, the people who I used to, who I did around, who I named Rob's good. This is where she lives. She always hears so her 24-7. So and she go up there and everything just went zero from there. It's very sad, it's broken, it, it shook up everybody. Everybody hurt about it, everybody. All over social media, because she was a very social media person. She was very friendly, always smiling, very jovial. Another friend and resident described the young mother as a jovial person. The child was admitted in the hospital from Thursday. So she was, a, she was home, based on the printer, she was home with her baby daddy alone. So, but the child was not there at no given time during the incident. And the child is not two months old, the child is four months old, according to the report that as well. So it's a four month old baby and it was, he was not on the scene. How do you remember? Jovial, easy going, friendly, helpful. Um, she was just a cheerful person. You will never be around her and there will be a sad moment. Evil, evil in her, in her time when she evil upset. Once you say something, she'll just find a way out to get over it and just start to be jovial. Always trying to give some joke or dancing or something. So she was a cheerful person. Well, I know it, it hit the family hard because um, just last week, Thursday, her auntie passed. So she is a, is a three night, she left last night and went home. So it's, it's a double morning right now for them. So it's a, try, it's a trying time. It's tough. So they're really not coping well at the present moment. I would just like to say um, that hope, um, the reports going forward will be uh, more, more concrete, that it will keep a positive memory of her. And because knowing that our child will grow up if he hear this tragedy of, he, of his mom, it is really touching and will be really um, a miss. We will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts. In other news tonight, detectives assigned to the St. Andrew Central Division are probing the circumstances surrounding the fatal shooting of a man and the injuring of a woman on North Odeon Avenue, Kingston 10, yesterday. 
The unidentified male is of dark complexion, slim build, and about 5 feet 6 inches tall, with plaited hair. The body was clad in a black t-shirt, light blue cut-off jeans, and a pair of black clerks. Reports from the halfway tree police coming into our news center are that at about 12.40 p.m., the now deceased was sitting at the bus stop when armed men approached him on a motorcycle. The pillion opened gunfire, hitting him all over his body, while the woman received an injury to her foot. The police were summoned and the injured persons were taken to hospital, where the male was pronounced dead. The woman is being treated. We will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts. In news from St. Anne, 47-year-old Audley Hines Mason of Hines Town, Ultra Rios, has been charged with wounding with intent, illegal possession of firearm, and illegal possession of ammunition after he shot his brother in his community on June 1. Reports from the St. Anne police coming into our news center tonight are that at approximately 10 p.m., a man was walking along the roadway when he was pounced upon by three gunmen who opened fire, hitting him in the face. During the melee, he recognized that one of the men was his brother. The injured man was transported to the hospital, where he was admitted in stable condition. On Friday, June 24, a question and answer session was conducted with Hines, and he was subsequently charged. Still in the news tonight, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is working with Senator Dr. Sapphire Longmore to get a team of mental health professionals into schools this week. This as part of ongoing efforts to bring wellness resources to the youth. The initiative is said to reflect the collaboration of the Health Ministry and the Ministry of Education and Youth in line with plans announced by Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton in his sectoral presentation in May. According to Dr. Tufton, concerns around mental health must be addressed as the island attempts to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. He added that the planned efforts include promoting better understanding and acceptance that mental health issues can affect anyone, with a specific effort to enhance the mental wellness of our children and support the concept and techniques of mental wellness as part of our coping mechanism. This week's efforts involves the Jamaica Psychiatric Association, of which Longmore is the current president, and the Jamaica Psychological Association. The professionals will visit some 32 secondary schools island-wide between today, June 27, and Thursday, June 30. During the visits, the students will have the opportunity to explore the four dimensions of health, namely the spiritual, the physical, the social, and the mental. The sessions, which are to benefit an additional number of schools that will join virtually, are also to expose them to coping skills for stress and share available resources. Still making Melo TV news tonight, Jamaica has begun work towards the elimination of trans fatty acids from its local food supply. This is part of efforts by the Ministry of Health and Wellness to reduce risk factors for non-communicable diseases which remain prevalent across the island. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bissacer McKenzie said that work is being done to increase the capacity of government labs to assess products. Two major labs have been provided with equipment to test for industrially produced trans fatty acids, IPTFA, and the relevant employees have been trained to analyze products in accordance with established guidelines. She was speaking at the 170th session of the Pan-American Health Organization Executive Committee in Washington, D.C. on Friday. Dr. Bissacer McKenzie also explained that significant work is ahead before the country ratifies the plan of action for the elimination of industrially produced trans fatty acids. The CMO highlighted that plans are in the pipeline for the development of regulatory policy. This includes pre-regulatory assessment 
in the form of a national study assessing foods that are sources of IPTFA, findings of which have been shared with key stakeholders including the general public, the food industry, media entities, academia, government bodies, policymakers and advocacy groups. Continuing with the news, medical student Marika Shaw topped the field of seven contestants vying for the 2022 Hanover Festival Queen title to walk away with a crown during Saturday's coronation at the Russies High School in Lucy. She will represent Hanover in the national leg of the competition, which is organized by the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, JCDC. Among Ms. Shaw's prizes were $90,000, courtesy of Orange Bay Health Center, Reggae Paradise, and the JCDC. A JCDC trophy, a weekend for two, courtesy of Grand Palladium Resort, and a gift basket, courtesy of Fontana Pharmacy. The 21-year-old was sponsored by Seaview Pharmacy. She also landed the title and the lion's share of sectional prizes. The talented future medical doctor won the awards for most congenial, most active in the community, most culturally aware and most popular on social media. The first and second runners up respectively were 21-year-old radio producer Celine Richardson who was sponsored by Miss Tano Trucking Services and 19-year-old teacher's assistant Brianna Johnson who won the prize for Best Performer. Miss Shaw, who spoke with journalists, had high praises for the other contestants, describing them as queens, adding that the contestants have built a friendship that she is certain will last forever. Very, very excited. A little nervous because I know that there are a lot of talented ladies that are going to buy for this role. So I'm a bit nervous, however, to present that someone who had very low self-esteem and never got to go and I took on this challenge to grow confident in myself and to also teach other young ladies that you can be confident in who you are and to never set any limits because the only limits there are in life are those that you set for yourself. Second place winner Celine Richardson described the evening as an amazing experience. This is truly an amazing experience. I don't know if you're seeing my face, but I'm very emotional because I'm happy that I came out to represent my parish, but not only my parish, myself, and also my loved ones who are my dearest supporters. So it was indeed a pleasure to be here and I did enjoy myself. Meanwhile, social media manager Chave Scale walked away with the Miss St. James Festival Queen 2022 title at the coronation show last night. The 24-year-old was among nine other contestants vying for the coveted crown at the event held at the Montego Bay Cultural Arts Center. This year's National Festival Queen competition is being held under the theme Reigniting the Power of the Jamaican Woman. And those are the stories making news. I am Shelley Hill. Stay safe, pleasant viewing, and thanks for watching.